Hey guys, welcome to Tutor Terrific. This is part two of a Solving Quadratic Equations series. In this uh, video, we are going to look at more complex methods of factoring quadratic equations, namely factoring by grouping and the complex diamond. So we're going to look at those two methods right now. All right, so let's start with factor by grouping. We use factor by grouping when we have four terms in our polynomial. So it's not a trinomial, but it has four terms, and they're of this type for a quadratic equation. ax squared plus bx plus cx plus d. So we see two terms in the middle that have an x to the first power. And uh, the first term has x to the second power, and the a can be one or not. It could be anything. So, for example, number one here, we have x squared plus 9x plus 6x plus 54. The premise of this type of factoring is to do GCF, greatest common factor style factoring, twice. We will separate the first and second binomial to begin with and factor those by GCF. Then we will factor the two generated terms, and I'll show you what I mean, by GCF again. Okay. So you're going to rope off, so to speak, both the first binomial and the second binomial. Now I know it's thought of as a single polynomial, but a polynomial with four terms has two binomials in it. Now, if there's a plus between the first and second binomial, you're fine. If there is a minus, you have to be a little more careful, and I'll go over that in the next example. Now we will factor this first one by GCF. What can I divide out of both x squared and 9x. I can divide out an x. They both share at most an x factor. So now I have that x divided out. All that's left is x times x plus 9. Now in the second one, what is the largest factor that those two terms share? 6. 6 does go into 54. 9 times. So I could pull out a 6 and I would get x plus 9. Now the way these are set up in your math books is that if you do it correctly, the two binomials inside parentheses that remain will be the same. Now I want you to notice something. I have created from four sums two sums with products. So now I really have, well, a single sum with, uh, of, two, of a product. Now I have two terms, okay, and I've bracketed them off for you. What factor do they share? They share each an x plus 9. So I'm going to take, this is weird, I'm going to factor out that entire x plus 9 factor. I know it's a binomial that I'm factoring out. Totally legal. And so you get that x plus 9 is being factored out or divided out. What is left in the first term? An x. What is left in the second term? A 6. Look at that. Now we've got a wonderful, simple binomial product that we use the zero product property on and we'll get the following results. X equals negative nine and negative six. Okay, now for a more complex one. This one has an A that's not equal to one. Now, what you sometimes have to do when you do any type of factoring, the first step will be to factor by GCF the entire thing. It makes it simpler. And that's totally fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, is there anything that all four terms share? What's the largest factor they all share? It's not one, it's seven, because each of these numbers is a multiple of seven. So I can factor by GCF right from the start, before I even break up the, for the two binomials. Then I get seven x squared minus uh, I have 28 divided by 7, that's 4. Uh, negative 14 divided by 7, negative 2 with an x. 56 divided by 7, 8. And here's the beauty of this. By the zero product property, this factor or this factor can equal 0. Well, I know 7 doesn't equal 0, so when I divide 7, it disappears. And that's always true with numerical factors. So it's just divided out and then it's erased because it would never help the expression equals zero. So it can be removed entirely through division. 
which is great. Now look what I have, a very simple one. That can only be done if you are solving the uh, quadratic equation, not just factoring it. We are solving. That's what this video series is about. Now we're going to break up the two. You see a minus sign right here? We have to handle that properly. The way we handle this properly is we include it in the second binomial and put a plus, an extra plus, in between the two. Okay? This will assure us that we do not forget to factor out a negative from both terms in case it's necessary. All right, let's look at the first binomial. What is the greatest common factor of this first binomial? It's x. So now we have x times x minus 4. Now remember, from up here, the goal is to get a binomial in the second, from the second binomial that is identical to this one. You see how the minus signs are reversed? What that means is that I want to pull out a negative 1. Can I pull out anything more? 2x and 8? Ah, I can. They both have a 2 as well. So I can divide out negative 2. So that's a minus sign now. And I get negative 2x divided by a negative 2. That's just x. Negative 8 divided by, uh, sorry, positive 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Aha. Now I have the same binomial. Here are my now two terms I need to effectively think about. And they both have that binomial x minus 4 as a factor. So I will pull that out. x minus 4. Now that, what's left when I divide that out of both terms is x and negative 2. So this is equal to 0. By the zero product property, I'm going to get the following two solutions. x equals positive 4 and positive 2. So here we have factoring by grouping, and this is a part of the solution to my final factoring method for solving quadratic equations, which we'll go over next. All right, guys, and for the last type of factoring in this video, the complex diamond, that's my name for it. Um, it's going to be used to solve the following type of quadratic equations, ax squared plus bx plus c. This time a is greater than 1 or something other than 1. It could be negative as well. The basic premise for factoring this way is to determine how you're going to break up the trinomial into a four-term polynomial that could be group factored. So the middle term, bx, we are going to figure out how to split that up so that we can group factor two binomials into two other binomials. And uh, that's the idea. So let's look at this first one. Now, you may be saying to yourself, but hey, mister, I can... Uh, take out negative 3 from all the terms and then turn it into a binomial or trinomial, excuse me, where a is 1. That is true. Let's not do that for the sake of this example. So what we're going to do is we're going to split it into two binomials where we don't know how the 6x term was split up. So it's going to look like this. We're going to create, just like it shows here in the pictorial, two binomials that are added together. We are going to place the negative 3x squared at, in the first spot. And we're going to place the 9 in the last spot there. And we're going to figure out how 6x is going to be broken up. We are going to use the diamond for this step. And it's quite nice. We're going to put the 6 down here for the middle term. But in the top term, we're not going to just put 9. We're going to put negative 3 times 9. Negative 27. Ah, okay. We've seen this before in another video. Now, when that negative 27, those are the numbers need to multiply. The two numbers we're looking to need to multiply to negative 27. They need to add to 6. That means one of them must have been negative so that they can add to something positive. One of them had to be positive. Let's think of how we could get 27. Well, the first thing to pop to mind is 3 times 9. Well, if we do 9 and negative 3, those add to 6 and multiply to 27. Does the order matter? No, it does not. It works both ways, which is quite nice. So here we have um, a 9. So we're going to place that 9, positive 9, in the second spot in the first parentheses, but we're going to put an x by it. Then we're going to put the negative 3 with an x by it at the first spot in the second parentheses and connect it to 9 with a plus sign because that 9 was positive. Aha, now we saw how 6x broke up into 9x and negative 3x. 
The next step is to do what we did in the previous factoring method, which is group factor from here on out. Now we can see that in this first binomial that we have an x in both terms at least, and we have 3 in both terms at least. But I hate a leading negative, and so I'm going to factor out negative 3x to get rid of that leading negative. So I'll move over here. Negative 3x will be factored out of my first binomial. Uh, my binomial, excuse me, and what I have left is x minus 3, x minus 3. In the second one, I'm going to divide out negative 3x, also, uh, no, excuse me, just negative 3. Both terms don't have an x, but they both do have 3, and again, I hate leading negative, so I'm going to factor out that negative, which will change this to a negative and make this term positive. So it's going to be minus 3, and then uh, what I have left is x and then minus 3. Okay, so what we see here, again, we will look at these as two separate terms. We will factor out the binomial x minus 3. And what we'll have left is negative 3x minus 3. Okay, we set each of these equal to 0 separately. From the first one, we'll get x equals 3. From the second one, we would subtract We'd add 3 over and then divide by negative 3. We're going to get negative 1. Okay, so we see how this works. It involves factoring by grouping, which is why I showed you that first. Next one. Now this one, 5, 18, and 9, it is completely um, unclear as to if I can factor out any numbers. In fact, I can't. Their greatest common factor is 1. Whereas before, I know I can factor out a negative 3, and I postponed it to show you the method. Here, I cannot do greatest common factoring. I have to do this complex diamond method. So I will make two parentheses with a plus sign in between them. And then I am going to do the following. I'm going to put the 5x squared at the first spot in the first parenthesis. I'm going to put the 9 in the last spot in the second parenthesis, figuring out how to break up negative 18. So where the diamond comes in. We put the negative 18 down in the bottom of the x box or diamond, and then the top we put 5 times 9, so 45. What two numbers multiply to 45 but add to negative 18? Aha! This time the, the product term is positive and the additive term is negative. That means the two numbers must both be negative. It's the only way for them to multiply to a positive and add to a negative. Let's think about 45. 45, 5 times 9. That's probably the first thing that comes to mind. Negative 5 and negative 9 do not add to negative 18. So we need to try another set of things that multiply to 45. And what it looks like to me is 15 and 3. If I do negative 15 and I do negative 3, those multiply to positive 45 and add to negative 18. So those are the two numbers with an x attached to them that go in these two spots. That's how negative 18 broke up. So it's minus 15x in the first one and minus 3x in the second one with a plus after it. Okay. So now we will do the group factoring of both these binomials. And we are going to see here, sorry, that's a 5. It's hard to see. Uh, that we could take out 5x from this first binomial. So divide that out, you get x minus 3. Now remember, that's what we want in the second binomial as well. So to get this from here, I must divide out negative 3. So it's to switch the sign. So this is positive and this one's negative. So minus 3, what's left inside is x minus 3. Okay. So now, looking at the two terms, I can see they both share that binomial x minus 3, so I'm going to factor that out now. x minus 3 times 5x minus 3, and that's equal to 0. Okay, now, by doing the zero product property, I'm going to get the following two solutions. x equals positive 3 from this one. From this one, when I add 3 over and divide by 5, I get 3 fifths. Yes, this time it's a fraction for one of the solutions. All right, guys. That about sums up the ways to solve quadratic equations by factoring 
if you look at part one and part two together of this series. In the third part, we're going to do methods for solving quadratic equations where factoring is not possible. All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video. This is Falconator signing out.